Hello coders! Welcome back to the Arduino Basics tutorial series. This is lesson number 14. In this lesson, we're going to be working with a vibration or a shake sensor along with a buzzer. We're going to use a simple two leg vibration switch, sometimes called a shake switch or a shake sensor. We're also going to use one of the standard two leg buzzers. To start out, let's look at the wiring diagram to set this thing up. We have our vibration sensor right here plugged into our breadboard. Now, it doesn't actually matter left leg or right leg as long as one of them is sent to A0 on our Arduino and one of them is sent to voltage. So I have the left leg going to voltage, the right leg going down into A0 on my Arduino. My buzzer has a positive and a negative and it'll be written right on your buzzer which side is the positive, which side is the negative. My positive end, I'm going to take to pin number four on my Arduino. My negative end, I'm going to take to the ground row on my breadboard. So ground that out. That's all the wiring we need to get this thing up and running. So take a second, get it wired up, and then meet me back in the coding environment. So here we are back in our code environment. I have a new file called Lesson 14, where we're going to trigger a buzzer when shaking the Arduino board. So we'll use that vibration sensor to do that. First things first, let's add in our pin declarations, as well as a variable that we'll use for our sensor value. We plugged our buzzer into pin four and our sensor into A0. So we've defined these as buzzer pin and sensor pin. I've also have an integer called sensor val, which is gonna store the value coming in from our sensor. The value has a range of zero to 1024. And we'll see that later with a print line statement that we'll do. Next, in our setup function, we have two things to do. We're gonna initialize our serial monitor and we're gonna set the pin mode for the buzzer pin. So our serial monitor is set up for debugging and for print statements. And then our pin mode for the buzzer pin will be an output pin. So we can output voltage to turn the buzzer on. Now we're ready to move on to our loop function. The first thing we need to do every time our code loops is we need to read the value from the vibration sensor. So to do that, we use an analog read on our sensor pin, and I'm gonna store the value in our sensor valve. This is the variable that we created at the top of the file. So sensor valve is now equal to the value read through an analog channel and the sensor pin. So pin number four, read in analog, stored in sensor value, okay? So now we have that number, we can actually look at it. The next thing is gonna be using an if statement to see if that value has changed. So what you'll notice when we look at our print line statement is our vibration switch tends to hover right around the value 1024 when no vibration is occurring. Maybe sometimes it dips down to 1023 and then we'll really not dip down below 1023 unless something actually happens, like it gets shaken or moved or bumped or whatever. So we'll use 1022 as a threshold value. So we'll do an if statement here with that value, the sensor value, and 1022. If my sensor value is less than 1022, this means that the board has been shaken or the sensor has been bumped or something has happened. Otherwise, it wouldn't get below 1022. It would be hovering around 1023, 1024. So what do we want to happen? Well, we're going to use a new function that we haven't used before called tone. Buzzers are pretty standard with Arduino, so we have a function we can call to send a specific tone over a pin. So what pin do we want to use? Buzzer pin. And what pitch of the tone do we want to send it at? I'll send this one out at 300. So this says send a tone over this pin at this pitch. Okay, so we can modify the pitch and things like that later on if we want to in the extensions and challenge. So now we have our if statement. So if the sensor is reading at a certain value, it's going to trigger a tone. So if the value is no longer reading under that, so the vibration has ceased, so this is our else statement, we need to call a function called no tone. And this just takes a pin value, and this stops sending a tone over that signal. So our if statement says if the sensor value dips below 1022, that's only gonna happen when the vibration occurs. Then we trigger the tone on the buzzer pin at this pitch, otherwise, no tone. So we should probably have a delay in here somewhere as well. Put a short delay at the end and we should add some debug statements in. So something so that we can see the sensor values as they're happening. So I'll actually put that up here before the if statement. So here are a couple of print line statements that we can use. Print the sensor value with a colon after it and then print line the actual value. And this will just give us a nice quick readout of what the vibration sensor is reading. The tone is pretty quick right now because our delay is so short, okay? We could have the delay be longer and that would allow the tone to play for longer before it goes back to detecting uh, vibration again. So let's push this code out to our board and let's see it in action. So now that we've pushed it out to the board, let's open up the serial monitor. 
so that we can see the values. So here we see 1023 is recording pretty much across the board. And if I just come over here and give a little flick to my sensor, you see that number of 732 cascading its way up and you heard the tone occur. So if I flick it a few more times, so we can see how the vibration is being triggered and the range of values that we're seeing. Usually in the 800, 900, maybe in the 700 range, depending on how severe vibration occurs. That's set up and that's working properly. This is just a great simple example of taking an input and then producing an output, which is really what we want to do with these boards. We want to be able to get the input that we want, do any calculations or logic with those inputs, and then produce a certain kind of output. That's the reason we learn this kind of code. Great job on this short, quick lesson on using a vibration sensor and a buzzer. We'll keep the extension short as well. So for an extension on this, why don't we just modify the beep or the buzz that we get? Why don't we see if we can get it to buzz or beep twice when the vibration occurs and maybe hold each one a little bit longer. So instead of just the really quick beep, we get a longer, maybe a half second or a one second beep, beep before it goes back to normal operation. Okay, great job with the quick extension. Let's move on to a quick challenge. For the challenge, I'd like you to use the actual values coming in from the serial monitor. So we said that we saw them around 700, 800, 900, and create a range of tones on the buzzer. So the more severe the vibration, the higher pitch the tone. So we set up a little range there. You can either use like a mathematical range, or you could just use several if statements. You know, essentially, if the sensor value comes in under 700, play this. If it's under 800, do this one, 900, whatever. So setting up some ranges so that we have at least three different tones that are going to occur depending on the severity of the vibration. And that's it for the challenge on this one. We wanted to keep this one pretty quick and pretty short, but still getting you using these core principles of programming like conditional statements, analyzing inputs, and producing outputs. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from it. And I hope I see you back here in lesson number 15. If you did enjoy it, be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date as we continue to post the Arduino Basics tutorial series. Have a great day.